Well, hello and welcome to the California Summer of Fun media webinar. Uh, we are here to talk about what's new this summer in the Golden State. I am Brittany Wood with Development Counselors International, and we are Visit California's Public Relations Agency of Record. Uh, so let's get started and learn more about the exciting updates across the Golden State. This is Jennifer Sweeney, a Public Relations Manager for um, the United States and Canada for Visit California. Um, we have a great variety of our um, Summer of Fun partners on the, this video with us today. Um, we're going to run through a lot of things, as Brittany mentioned, that are new this summer and uh, that will continue on um, through the rest of the year. So um, just a look ahead at what we'll be discussing uh, coming up first is uh, our friends at the Disneyland Resort, followed by SeaWorld San Diego, Universal Studios Hollywood, Iris from Cirque du Soleil, and then our uh, City Pass partners, followed by some other new developments in California. So we'll get started right away uh, with Cheryl from Disneyland. Hi, this is Renee Trico. I'm one of the Disney ambassadors here. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, to let you know what's happening this summer, we're revving up for an exciting summer. We have two parks, Disney California Adventure Park as well as Disneyland Park, three resort hotels, entertainment, dining, and shopping district at downtown Disney. And really, it's, it's all been a part of a five-year expansion that started in 2007. And we're, um, we have a bunch of photos that are going to be following these slides as well. But the renovation is starting. And as you can see in some of those slides, we have a couple of cars right down at the bottom. That's from our new, newest land that's 12 acres large. And it's Cars Land. And if we go to the next slide, our whole purpose of this is to keep the magic going. One day really isn't enough to spend at the Disneyland Resort to experience all those memories and making magic. And we have um, opportunities for extra magic hours for our hotel guests, as well as our downtown Disney district, again, with live entertainment. Our locations, in, uh, including a Lego Imagination Center, which has just been newly developed, and our La, ba uh, La Brea Bakery, which also went through some renovations. It's really, really going to be a great time to visit us during the summer. And if you go to the next slide, please. Here are a few photos of Cars Land. And again, this is 12 acres where our Imagineers have pretty much just reimagined a whole area of Disney California Adventure Park. So at the top, you see Radiator Springs Racers, where you could race against guests, and you never know who's going to win in these car themed and this car themed attraction. You'll be going around all of Ornament Valley. And right below that is Mater's Junkyard Jamboree, where Toe Mater himself will actually be giving you a little bit of a hoe down, and you'll be dancing around with other baby tractors who will be pulling you around the track. Uh, next slide, please. And top left is Luigi's Flying Tires. And imagine yourself in this just humongous tire that Luigi has provided for you and gliding across the top of uh, the floor. It's almost as though you're on an air hockey table. There are beach balls involved, a lot of fun, a lot of smiles, and a lot of Italian music, as you can imagine. And on the right-hand side is Flo's VA Cafe, which is one of three of our new um, dining attractions inside of Cars Land. And Flo's is just like the film, a uh, Disney Pixar film, Cars. It's absolutely incredible. The, the um, the food options there are absolutely delicious. And right below is one of our other food options. It's the Cozy Cone Motel, where you can get cone-themed um, food, just like chile, cone carne, or popcorn, or cone on the cob. You have a lot of different options there. And believe me when I say it, they are absolutely incredible. Now the next slide showcases the newly renovated uh, entrance to Disney California Adventure Park. Now, when you step through the gates of Disney California Adventure Park, it'll literally be as though you're stepping back in time into the 1920s when Walt Disney first visited California. And that's really what we wanted everybody to see. As you walk down Buena Vista Street, which is the main street to Disney California Adventure Park, you'll be greeted by guests, performers, cast members alike. And at the very end, you'll see Carthay Circle Theater, where Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs premiered in 1937. And this is kind of paying an homage to that film and to that theater. But Carthay Circle Theater will be to Disney California Adventure Park what Sleeping Beauty Castle is to Disneyland Park. So it's truly iconic. 
Also in the uh, slide, you can see the red car trolley, and that's just paying homage again to the 1920s, 1930s era uh, of California. So a lot of great things happening at the Disneyland Resort, and you can't only stop at Disney California Adventure Park. Of course, at Disneyland Park, we have our fireworks, and at Disney California Adventure Park, we have our world of color, a lot of entertainment, a lot of fun, a lot of memories, a lot of magic making. So for more information, we please urge you to go to Disneyland.com to plan that perfect vacation. And now we'd like to turn it over to our great partners from SeaWorld San Diego. Hi, thank you. This is Kelly Terry. I'm the uh, PR manager for SeaWorld San Diego. And we have some exciting things to tell you about going on at our park. Um, the biggest thing going on right now, the big buzz, is about Manta. And this is really represents what SeaWorld does best, which is combining the thrill and the fun of a ride or an attraction with an animal exhibit as well. And Manta does just that. We opened it just recently, May 26th, Memorial Day weekend, this launched. And it is hugely popular. And it tells the story of the ray. Of an, so we always like to tell an animal story. So Manta tells the story of a ray. And you get to become the manta ray when you take part in this exhibit. So it's two parts. Um, and I'll, t I'll talk about the coaster first, and then I'll talk about um, the animal part. So this is, this is huge for us. This is our first major roller coaster. It's a double launch multimedia roller coaster, first in San Diego. And we're really excited about it. It is the largest single capital investment in our history. Um, the coaster is absolutely amazing. We're getting rave reviews about it. A lot of coaster enthusiasts have come out and ridden it, theme park, uh, trade publications, and different bloggers, and everyone's loving it. And they're all saying that it's faster than you think it's going to be. Um, it's low to the ground, so you really feel the speed, lots of twists and turns. There's a 54-foot drop. Um, it starts in a launch station with a 270-degree um, enveloping screen, and this is designed to really immerse you into the ocean and make you feel like you're the ray. And then you launch out of there and reach your maximum speed in just two seconds. So really, really exciting ride. Um, there's a second launch where you kind of slow down and then reach maximum speed again in two seconds. Um, it's just under two minutes, packed, packed with fun. And then as well as that, the other great part of Manta is the animal experience. And again, this is what SeaWorld is known for. This is what we do best. And this is an opportunity for riders and non-riders to interact with rays. We have a 100,000-gallon aquarium, and there's viewing underneath. So as you're in the queue line for the ride, you can see rays swimming around you. If you're on the non-rider side, you can actually see them swimming above you. And then you can come upstairs to the shallow touch pool, and you can reach in and interact and touch and feed rays. And it's absolutely amazing. It's very kid-friendly. The pool is it's a shallow pool, and the side of it is kind of low to the ground. So it's great for kids and the whole family to come on by and interact with rays. So that is Manta. We're going to move on to the next slide. Um, some of the things that are not new this summer that are very new to us, though, still, and very big attractions that we've most recently opened, and that is Turtle Reef and One Ocean. And then I'll also get to some of the other animal interactions that we have at SeaWorld, but I'll start with our two attractions that opened in 2011 on this slide, and that's Turtle Reef, um, which is an amazing multi-level attraction. Um, it's got a ride element. It's got a 300,000-gallon aquarium. Um, it's got a game where you become the sea turtle, and so you have to know what predators to avoid and uh, what things that you're supposed to eat as your turtle species. So it's great for kids to learn about different different uh, species of sea turtles, which are all threatened and endangered, but also have fun at the same time. So that's Turtle Reef, opened in 2011. And then as well, we also opened a brand new Shamu show in 2011 called One Ocean. Of course, Shamu is the star of SeaWorld, so you can't visit the park without seeing Shamu. This is an amazing show, very interactive with, with the audience. And there's an underlying message that we're all part of one world, one ocean. That's why it's called One Ocean. And it's designed to inspire our guests to care about the world we share and make de make decisions in their own life that can make a big that can make a big difference in our environmental world. world. Um, animal interactions. So can't talk about SeaWorld without talking about making a connection with marine life. 
and we believe that if you come to our parks and you make a connection with marine life, that you're going to take that out into the world and make better decisions when it comes to the environment and the world we share. So one of the newest things we have is we closed down our Rocky Point Preserve area for some rehabilitation, uh, fixed up the rocks and did some paint work and things like that. And then we reopened it with kind of a new purpose and, and a new mission there. And we want all of our guests to be able to connect with the dolphin. It's really high on the list for a lot of people who come to SeaWorld. They want to touch a dolphin. So at the new Dolphin Point area, um, there are specified times throughout the day where you can, you can see it on the park map. And you can come over and interact with the dolphins and the trainers at the same time. So the trainers are in the water with the dolphins. And they're right along shallow ledges or alongside of the pool. And they're engaging with our guests so that you might get to feed a dolphin, you might get to give a training signal, touch and feed, all kinds of wonderful interactions there. We also have, by reservation, our dolphin interaction program, where you get in a wetsuit and get in the water. Our beluga interaction program, where you also reserve that, get in the water with beluga whales. Very, very rare experience to do that. Not many places in the world where you can interact with beluga whales. We also have a number of guided tours, and then our education programs, lots of great ways for school kids from preschool on up through high school to come into the park, learn about marine science, play, you know, play games, kayak on the bay, interact with our animals, interact with our trainers and our keepers. Very, very immersive, very, very hands-on. So that is a look at SeaWorld California. Please visit our website, which is SeaWorldSanDiego.com. And with that, I will turn it over to Universal Studios Hollywood. Hi, my name is Trinae Pittam, and I'm Publicity Senior Manager at Universal Studios Hollywood. And 2012 is a really exciting year as Universal celebrates our 100th anniversary. And 100 years after the creation of this iconic Hollywood Dream Factory, we're proud to say that Universal Studios Hollywood is still the world's only working movie studio and theme park. And uh, aboard the world-famous studio tour, we continue to allow guests up the close and personal look of the world of movie making. And for those who choose our VIP experience, the thrill is even more grand. Now, this was a tour first created for dignitaries and celebrities, but we are now able to offer this opportunity to the general public. And the VIP experience is a deep dive into the history of the backlot, and visitors access many locations that are normally completely off limits, uh, the prop warehouse, the wardrobe department, and some working sets, including television, and sometimes movie sets as well. It's just really an unforgettable day. And if we want to move to the next slide, um, now the news that everyone is talking about this summer is our new attraction, Transformers The Ride 3D. And if you ever wanted to truly live out a movie, uh, this, is as <laughs> this is as close as you can possibly get. Uh, guests wear newly created special 3D glasses and you zoom along about 2,000 feet of track at perceived speeds of 60 miles per hour. And what makes Transformers The Ride 3D truly amazing is that the director of the film, Michael Bay, actually served as creative consultant on the ride. And then when you add that, that Industrial Light and Magic, which is the special effects company created by none other than George Lucas, created the HD 3D media, it's just, it, it will just blow your mind. If we move to the next slide, um, not only do we keep the experience authentic with the help of Michael Bay and ILM, but the voices you hear are the original voice talent for the film. So you will instantly know that you're in the presence of Megatron and Optimus Prime. All the characters that you, you've known since childhood, they're all part of this original story. It affects like wind and heat and water take the experience one step further. Plus, there are screens that tower over 60 feet, enveloping you in this amazing story. And it's just really like any other theme park you've ever ridden before. Um, the next slide tells you a little bit about the response we've received for Transformers Ride 3D. It's, it's been outstanding. Um, from celebrities like uh, very popular director Judd Apatow calling it insanely great, and About.com proclaiming it as the best ride ever. You can't really say more than that. The positive, the positive feedback uh, received has just been out of this world. And a footnote for parents of younger kids that while your older children are riding Transformers over and over, um, very nearby adjacent to Jurassic Park is a new area called Dino Play. Now, Dino Play has a prehistoric theme to match Jurassic Park, 
and it's perfect for our smaller guests who aren't quite ready for the thrills offered by Transformers and Jurassic Park, and then also Revenge of the Mummy is also very nearby. And finally, uh, our last slide here, um, Universal Studios Hollywood is the entertainment capital of LA, and one place that is perfect for your entire family, young and old, is CityWalk. And after a great day in the park, uh, City Walk, at CityWalk, there's the Five Towers concert venue. Now, at Five Towers this summer, we have a great lineup of musical acts, including Tyrese and some other names you will recognize from American Idol and the very popular television show, The Voice. To learn more about City Walk and the Music Spotlight series at Five Towers, you'll want to visit citywalkhollywood.com. And be sure to let your readers or viewers know that at universalstudioshollywood.com, they can find out more about Transformers and the theme park and all of our special offers. So with that, we will now hear from our friends at Cirque du Soleil's Iris. Hello, this is Jennifer Sweeney with Visit California speaking on behalf of Cirque du Soleil, uh, talking about their show that's currently at the Hollywood and Highland Center in Hollywood. Um, the title Iris refers to the camera lens and it is conceived as a fantastic voyage through the world of cinema and the heart of movie making. While the show is not about individual films, it allows um, the audience to have an experience with how movies are dreamed of and conceived and what they mean to us. And uh, the show also gives a sense of various iconic genres, including film noir, musicals, adventure, and even science fiction, all while carrying the hallmarks of imagination and of human potential that are embodied in all of the Cirque du Soleil shows. Um, Iris is the first resident show in California, going back to its 1987 roots when Cirque successfully came to Los Angeles for a make or break performance. Iris conjures up a place between motion and picture, light and sound, shifting constantly between reality and make-believe to explore the limitless possibilities of cinema. This is evoked in a number of ways, uh, the bustle of a sound stage, amazing visual and optical effects, a sense of what and how we perceive, and sometimes how the eyes are deceived. Uh, renowned and respected worldwide, Cirque du Soleil has provided high-quality artistic entertainment for more than 25 years, consistently redefining the live entertainment experience the company has brought wonder and delight to more than 100 million spectators in nearly 300 cities on five continents. Positioned in key gateway destinations around the United States, including New York, Orlando, Las Vegas, and here in Los Angeles, Cirque du Soleil is the perfect must-see activity for every international traveler. Iris conjures up a place between motion and picture, light and sound, um, and, and really captures the movie experience. Hollywood movies are important in many ways to all of us, artistically, culturally, and socially, and in many ways they help define our hopes, dreams, and aspirations. Cirque du Soleil has created a show inspired by the world of cinema that is the experience to have when visiting Los Angeles. With a combination of dance, acrobatics, beauty, feats of human agility, and daring live video, film footage, and interactive projections, the show gives an experience of the movies in all its splendor, inventiveness, and above all, its sense of wonder. Um, Iris boasts talent from around the world, including many former Olympic athletes. 17, 72 performers are from, um, hail from more than 15 different countries. Um, Iris loads its entire production, including offices and staging, out of the theater to make way for the Academy Awards and is dark for approximately one and a half months. Cirque du Soleil was an integral part of the 2012 Academy Awards telecast. 40 performers from Iris, along with artists from Viva Elvis and Zarkana, appeared on the Oscar Awards show, the largest Cirque du Soleil cast ever, ever assembled for a single act. And uh, special this year for the Summer of Fun, Cirque du Soleil is rolling out two special offers for families. Uh, there are different categories of tickets, but they have two um, great specials. Uh, four Category 1 tickets for $250 and four Category 2 tickets for $199. So it's a great way to take advantage of some family fun at Cirque du Soleil this summer. So that's um, what's happening at the uh, Dolby Theater in Hollywood. And I will pass the uh, mic over to uh, CEO and founder of CityPass, Mike Gallagher. Hi, hi thanks very much. I'm uh, happy to be with you today. Uh, all these attractions are amazing. Uh, San the City Pass is the, uh, brings them all actually together. We have 11. This is our 15th year. I founded City Pass with a friend of mine, and we have 11 North American cities, but California is the only place where we have three. 
And our goal is really to save travelers both time and money when they visit these major cities. So I'll talk about San Francisco first. And this was our first city pass uh, 15 years ago. Uh, it includes a, a tickets to the top five attractions and unlimited use of the cable cars. And that also includes the Muni transportation system. So the city pass is good for nine days. It saves you 48% off the cost of buying tickets individually. And so once you have it, you just go to each place. And the, the attractions in San Francisco are uh, the California Academy of Sciences in Golden Gate Park. This has just been redone. Uh, they spent $500 million rebuilding the California Academy of Sciences uh, and opened it about three years ago. And it's both a uh, science museum, an aquarium, a natural history museum, uh, all under one roof. And then, of course, the Golden Gate Bridge uh, is best seen by the water. And the Bay Cruise are, is part of that. You can take a one-hour Bay Cruise with a city pass under the Golden Gate Bridge. Or if you want to go to Alcatraz, you can do that, but you do need to buy the tickets directly from Alcatraz because that's the only city pass attraction that requires a reservation. And if you don't buy that in advance, you're probably not going to get to go to Alcatraz, but you could swap out your Bay Cruise ticket. The other one is the Museum of Modern Art in San Francisco, the greatest collection of modern art in, on the West Coast. The Exploratorium is one of the original science museums, and that shares a ticket with the fine arts museums, uh, the de Young and the Legion of Honor. So if you have children with you, you definitely want to go to the Exploratorium. Or if not, you may want to go to the uh, De Young Museum. And you can buy all that for about $69, for exactly $69. And then the Hollywood City Pass is the second one we have. Uh, that's the Walk of Fame. And this one is good for nine days, but you really can do it in a day and a half. The, the main attractions in Hollywood are the Kodak Theater, well, now the Dolby Theater, actually. And that's where the Cirque du Soleil is. But during the day, you can walk through and uh, see. And the best, it's a guided tour that talks about the Oscars. And you can see where the Oscars get up on the stage uh, actually happen. And um, and that also includes a movie star's home tour with Starline that takes you around uh, the homes to Hollywood and Beverly Hills and all around that. Uh, Madame Tussauds just opened there a year or so ago. And yeah, Madame Tussauds is a pretty amazing place. Uh, the uh, stars uh, that are in Madame Tussauds, also many of them live not too far away. And I understand many of them will actually have a birthday party for their kids at Madame Tussauds to see their wax figure. Movies, the Red Line Tour is a behind-the-scenes tour of Hollywood that takes you through all the places that you could normally go. And then uh, we have the Hollywood Museum, which is in the old Max Factor building, and it really has many of the artifacts from the movies. So, but the next one, and this is the biggest one we have in California, is the Southern California City Pass. And each of these attractions, as I, I don't think I could describe them better than the people on the phone already did it, but these are the original Disney, SeaWorld, and Universal Studios. This is where that all began. And in my opinion, it is by far better than any of the other ones. Um, they might not like me saying that, but I live in California, and, and there's nothing like Disneyland. This is the only one Walt actually had his feet in. And now City Pass includes not only Disneyland, but also California Adventure, the park right next door. And you can walk between the two. And you get a three-day ticket to visit uh, both Disneyland and California Adventure. And you go back and forth. And it also includes an early admission uh, morning uh, that in the City Pass. And this one is uh, if you bought the Universal and SeaWorld and uh, Disney together, it would be $400 for this. And this one's $279. Uh, and so in the case of uh, uh, the, you know, Disneyland, and you can do these three days, and it's good for 14, so you don't have to be consecutive. You can do Disney for a day or so and then go down to SeaWorld. And SeaWorld, uh, that's my first job at SeaWorld, actually. And, and it, it is, it is not unlike any other place, uh, marine park in the world. Uh, and now with MANA, it is even more exciting to go there. And then also we include Universal Studios Hollywood. And I got a chance to go on the Transformer ride uh, a week or so ago it was open. And I, I've never seen anything quite like that in terms of just realistic. It's um, difficult to over say what an amazing ride that is. Uh, so that's a highly recommended this summer as you come into Southern California. So it's good for 14 days. So you get one day at Universal, one day at SeaWorld, three days at Disney. But also you have plenty of time to go to the beach. Um, you don't have to do these consecutively at any of the days you want to do it. So it really gives you the freedom to um, go see other, other uh, the beach in particular, other things you might want to do in Southern California. And the saving on all of the city passes is always significant. And you can buy them at any one of the attractions that participate. 
any one of the um, attractions websites. You can go and buy it in advance, or you can also buy it at citypass.com. So thank you for the opportunity to talk to you uh, about this, and appreciate you uh, telling the story about what a great time it a great time it is to come to California. In addition, thanks everybody um, for for your overviews. Um, and Mike's right; it, there couldn't be a better time to come to California. Um, but there are also some other attractions uh, along the same lines that are opening up this summer as well. Lego Land in San Diego County is uh, launching their Pirate Reef attraction. Uh, Six Flags Discovery King Kingdom, which is uh, here in Northern California, has a new uh, ride, the Superman's Ultimate Flight, and um, Six Flags Magic Mountain is introducing the Lex Luthor Drop of Doom. So you can tack one of these trips, these visits to parks on one of your other visits for a little added event adventure on your California vacation. Um, here at Visit California, we have lots of resources for media. We have a recently launched media portal online, uh, which can be accessed by visiting media.visitcalifornia.com. There you'll find all our press releases, uh, events, um, story ideas, fun facts, lots of opportunities for story development, and of course all the contact information for the Visit California team here and inter in California and internationally. We also have a visiting journalism program um, inviting uh, writers and uh, other media from around the world to come and visit our state because find that there's really no better way to write about it or um, talk about it if it's, unless you've been here. Um, we also have a news bureau where we can help you with fact checking and like I mentioned about the media center, um, developing story ideas. The other great resource we have is um, thousands of high definition um, images, both still images and um, B-roll that is available free and is easily downloadable for your media uses. Uh, so either contact me or uh, just browse around on the media center. Any additional questions um, about anything you've heard on today's um, video, you can contact me. My contact information is on the screen now, Sweeney at visitcalifornia.com, or you can uh, reach out directly to any of our presenters today. So um, and we're all eager to um, answer your questions and get more visitors out here to the Golden State this summer. And with that, we will just say thank you again for taking some time today to learn about the various um, updates of the attractions across California. Um, you can see here on the screen, visitcalifornia.com is the best place to plan uh, a Cal California vacation, either you or your readers. Additionally, uh, Visit California has recently released an iPad app that is free in the App Store and can help you plan an itinerary across the state. And we sincerely hope that we can welcome you and your readers in California for this summer of fun.